Hello viewers and welcome to a new STM32 world tutorial video. In a much earlier video, uh, number 22 to be exact, uh, I was showing how you can jump to the built-in bootloader of the STM32. Now, in doing so, um, the trick is to keep a variable between uh, reboots, surviving reboots, which is normally not possible since the static variables are always reset to zero. Uh, but we used a somewhat ugly hack uh, in doing so. Uh, by setting a variable, our bootloader flag to the e-stack value, that is the top of the memory minus an um, offset 100 bytes down the stack. In doing so, in using this, which we are doing when we are rebooting, uh, we set that bootloader flag to a known value. <coughs> um, in doing so, we are going to mess up the stack. But the theory was that messing up the stack when the next command is actually a system reset was an acceptable uh, sacrifice. Um, and I, I, to be honest, I don't think it'll ever go wrong, but uh, I just uh, had a brain thought that this could actually be done in a slightly safer manner. Uh, so let's have a look at the code. First of all, let's try to run it. Uh, I have the console output there as usual. And I have my output here, so it comes up as a virtual COM port, and after 10 seconds, it will boot into the bootloader. It will restart into the bootloader, and you can see over here, my USB device shows up as the STM32 bootloader. So, if we analyze the code a bit, um, what we are doing is we are referring to an external variable called eStack, uh, and then we have a pointer called bootloader flag. And in the beginning of the code, at the very entrance of main, we set our bootloader flag to whatever e-stack uh, address uh, e-stack is on, minus uh, 100. And then that is all she wrote, and we just uh, use this boot flag. If that boot flag is holding our dead beef, uh, then we will actually jump uh, to the bootloader. Uh, and it's as simple as that, nothing else happens. So in order to use this, all we do is we set the bootloader flag equals that, and then we reset the CPU. And after it restart, it'll be caught up here. Uh, now let's have a look at the e-stack. Where is the e-stack defined? I think I covered that in the original video, but it is actually um, defined in here in the STM32 F45 flash linker script. And you can see the first thing it does in that linker script is it takes the origin of the RAM, which is defined by down here, and we add the length of the RAM, and that will give us the highest address, and that is available in this MCU and that is the one we are using. Now, when we, if we try to debug this application, let's try to run the debugger. It always stop at the entrance uh, of the main. And if we look over here at our registers in this, uh, in the CPU, MCU, you can see that the stack pointer is 200, and if we try to stop, that mysteriously or coincidentally maps with one address above what is the highest address. So it is the highest address available in this MCU. So what I was thinking, rather than doing this minus 100 trick here, why not move the stack? And an easy way of doing that would be in here to... Um, bootloader flag, we could take, copy, wait, we could copy this line 
up here and call that B flag. And then we could actually do the calculation right away and say we don't want to be at the highest because we need to reserve four bytes. So we could say minus four. That would be our B flag. And that is where we want our bootloader flag to be. Now we can change our E stack. Set that equals B flag. And that should basically work. So let's try to test that first of all by again running the debugger. We are not going to use it yet, but if we run the debugger, where where is the stack pointer now? And if our theory is correct, you will see that the stack pointer is now four bytes lower than it was before. D E F. So four bytes lower. So it it can work. We can re relocate the stack, uh, and that leaves us four bytes at the top of the memory that we can use for our bootloader flag. So let's use that instead and try to say, uh, where are we? Here we have an external int. We could do an extern int b flag. We can leave the e stack. It doesn't matter. We're just not using it. Um, and then down here where we set our bootloader flag, we can set our bootloader flag equals, and it's a UN32T, and the address of B stack. No calculation is needed now. So now we're using that address from the linker script. Let's um, try to compile this project to see if we got away with it. We did not. What did I do wrong? Underscore B stack. Uh, it was called B flag, right? Uh, where are we? B flag. So not B stack. I'm sure some of you screamed. Unfortunately, this is a one way communication. So that doesn't help, just to let you know. But it compiles just nicely. So let's try to run this. There. It was starting and we wait 20 seconds, 10 seconds before it should go into the bootloader. Jump into the bootloader and wouldn't you know it, the bootloader starts up. So we haven't changed the method of what we're doing here. It still works, but we are now reserving four bytes of the memory for this use and it we but by doing that we're not messing with the stack we simply move the stack four bit uh, four byte down in memory and it still works so there you go i think this is probably it, it is wasting four byte of memory but i think we can survive that in most cases we got uh, what 128 kilobyte of it so uh, wasting four byte is probably worth it uh, and this is a very, very safe approach. There is no way this could go wrong. Um, so that's about it. So that is pretty much all uh, I was going to say today. This has been a very short video. <clears throat> if you watched the earlier video and think that this was an interesting approach, please do, please do like and subscribe below. Um, it is also the time of year where I should say Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. And uh, as usual, uh, please have a wonderful rest of the day.